Welcome to the Augur meeting, September 17th, 2020. Um, I will put the minutes in the, in there. Don's not here. Uh, that's it. Everyone else for tech is not here. Um, all right. And let's see. So Dev is back. Uh, uh, oops. So first thing is that uh, the dev branch is now the current development branch. So <clears throat> merge it into your forks periodically and uh, when you're ready to do a pull request uh, in PR into it when ready. And then Ivana mentioned um, Slack integration. So some of you may recall that we have a tool called Augie. And let's see, how do I, I'm gonna have my notes in one window. And So if I share my screen, this is Augie. Augie is at augie.augerlabs.io. I can and I believe actually Augie has a cross-posting issue with Firefox, so I'll have to do him in. There's a cores thing because it goes to multiple servers. So I have to use Chrome because Chrome is less picky about cores. sign in with Slack and like it would be whatever workspace. So in this case, I would make it on the labs, continue and what will Augie be able to view? Content information. Okay. Allow. And then I can change this to. Um, I lost connection for a while. You lost connection? Yes, for a few seconds now and then. And so it'll go to Pivotal, and that might take a minute because Pivotal is a bit of a ways away. Just make sure. Oh, duh. Well, that was a help that I owe. Now it should start retrieving things. All right. And so these are all of the um, repos that are hosted. So I don't know what a real active repo is, but do you know an active repo off the top of your head, Yvonne? Um, I didn't check them actually. Okay. Um, I need to. <clears throat> I... Let me say, check for a while. Uh, let's see. Let's 
seen clarity. And then I could also look for, I remember, is it rough? Oops, I didn't. So you basically check the repos that you want to track. I'll just save my options. And that lets me. Oh, I know. And that is active for sure. Uh, it's called It's I'm sure. Oh, okay. It says setting saves. Um, uh, search for pivotal. And I've seen Harbor stuff recently. So you can um, pick pick the repos that you want to track, and then you can have so many messages per day on each of these different changes. And then you click Add to Slack. And I have Augie here. And so if I ask Augie which repos, Augie will send me back a message to let me know Thomas. which repos are being tracked. And you can see they're the ones that I just selected. And if you want to know, where that is set. That is actually set on the server. So wherever you have your auger instance, you can see on Augie, which is at augie.augerlabs.io that you put your wherever your Slack, wherever your sorry, Slack um, auger instance is, and then the port that it's on. If you don't know the port, you can ask me. Uh, in the case of Pivotal, it's 5002. Uh, we're working on some functionality that will reveal that. Um, and I actually share my screen here. Oops. So then. I go to my server if I have access to it. Looking for my terminal. There it is. And so I'll just uh, SSH Sean at pivotal.health.io. password oops wait a minute get in the password for the wrong server yeah. 
だから、and then in the auger.config.json, there's a housekeeper block, and this is where the model for the insight worker, right? Actually, look in workers that this gets set. Yeah. And so it's the insight worker, and it tells you which things to monitor, what your contamination tolerance is, uh, what your training days are, and the switch is whether or not it's on, which it's not right now because I'm gathering data uh, for Pivotal. But you turn the switch on, the higher the contamination number, it's a value between zero and one, the less or the more notifications you'll get that could be po po false positives and the lower the contamination the and same with confidence interval the higher the confidence interval the higher the contamination factor um well i guess the higher the confidence interval the fewer anomalies will be detected because the tolerance for what an anomaly is is a higher uh and in contamination the higher the contamination number is the the also the fewer that you get no the, the higher it is the more that you get so the more contamination you allow the more you get you can set training days to you know what is your normal period that you want to examine uh anomalies so what do you want to set your norm at so it'll be essentially a, a rolling standard deviation and rolling uh median me, mean of each metric across whatever period of time i have your set for 1200 days and then it'll look for anomalies in the last 13 days. So the next time I restart Pivotal, that will start. And uh, that's how that works. And I'm just going to see if um, the massive collection that I started last week is finished. Today is 17th, uh, is 2 p.m. It looks as though actually your pull request collection finished. Howdy doody. All right, so we're just going to do some really fancy stuff here. edit this. So there's two with the, we're going to make this automatic, but we haven't yet. Um, you don't want to be running the contributor worker when you're running any of the other collection workers. And the collection workers are the facade worker and the GitHub worker. The insight worker is not a collection worker. Um, the Linux badge worker, probably it won't interfere because there's no users associated with it. Pull request worker certainly will because there are, it collects data. Essentially anything where there's gonna be a username, so repo info doesn't actually have a username that gets re reconciled, uh, nor does value. Uh, and what that means is, so anywhere where we're going to be getting a GitHub user and uh, D sort of, uh, what do you call it, consolidating them, getting rid of dupes and putting users into, so like uh, pull requests, issues, all the comments associated with them, commits, they all have a connection to who the contributors are. And what the contributor worker does is it says, here's your email address from commits. Is your email address associated with a user ID on GitHub or GitLab? Um, like a, not the user login, but an actual GitHub user ID, which is a number that exists already inside the contributor table. And if it does, it goes and it reckon it, it goes and assigns all of the contributors who are, like if I have 10 email addresses, it basically makes that one contributor in our contributor table. 
and it maps the rest of them to what's called an alias table. Does that make sense? So I can't be collecting anything. Uh, no. Does that make sense? Does that, what I say makes sense? Basically, I can't be collecting anything that uh, it could be writing over. So pull requests, commits, issues, anything where a user is stored in the row, I can't collect it. I think it's on green now, actually. Not when I did that. Let me just check. Yep. Kill, and then. I do uh, basically just restart Augur. Actually, before I restart Augur, I probably want to uh, Copy the logs to my home directory in case I want to look at those later. Ampersand. And then. And so now it's going to start collecting anomalies once it gets going. So now it's moving. And now that it's moving, at some point when it gets to the repositories that I'm following, it's going to start sending me Slack messages. Um, and I'll get I'll get Slack messages for those repos, that, that subset of repos that um, that we're tracking. And did you say that you found a very active repo? Yeah, it's called uh, turn in turn to Sark. T. I, I will send you in the chat. Hmm. 
Okay. It's not an open bell. Should have already been added to Slack, so I don't know. I think because I didn't log out and log back in, I just overwrote. So now I'm not going to get my. Almost. Now it's just doing that one. I don't know why it keeps asking me to edit to save OG options. So we saved. It shouldn't keep asking me for that, but but now it should be. Um, Now it's all of those. So if I exit here, it should show me when I log back in. Um, what's happening? But <clears throat> it should start getting anomalies over the next. You've got like three over three thousand repos. So. That's that's an example of how Augie works. So again, that's at uh, augie.augerlabs.io. Um, oh, it looks like I closed my. So, oops. So that's that's uh, one really cool thing. So. You can actually look at that where Augie is. Um, it's in a repo here. <laughs> Apparently, I did not get up dot com. That's chaos. Oops. Actually, I need to do that. Our lab still. <coughs> That's a little bit old. Maybe it is in chaos now. Augur Augie, there we go. So, 
So this essentially explains um, And then there's a development guide here for how to contribute to Augie. Um, and there's some, it's essentially an AWS service that we use for Lex, which lets it do natural language things. And so you have to set up all your AWS stuff. Um, and then, uh, So this is this is the development guide that allows you to um, fix things. And let's see. Yeah, there's no. But this is the if you want to develop new Augie signals, Ivana. This is where you put them. And apparently I closed my minutes when I closed my browser. This is the RE source code. dot auger labs dot io if you simply want to get anomaly notifications for your instances yeah that's it And there's one Google Summer of Code student. Yeah, there's and there's one Google Summer of Code student who's been. Thank you very it. much for for um, my my connection for some reason. I did record this, so you can go back over and um, listen to the recording. Um, once it's posted, the Chaos website. And um, what I will do is there's also. A Google Summer of uh, Akshara. Google Summer of Code did some work with Augie. Kind of knows the ins and outs. Also, Jonah Zukowski is the person, the original developer of Augie. So if you have like questions, you can open them as an issue um, in the Augie repository. Um, Your GitHub username, Ivana. Uh, e. Uh, I will type it in the chat. Just have to find the It's uh, Ivana Y O B. All right. With I. Yeah. But this Ivana. one. Is that you? Uh, no, uh, no, it's not me. It's Ivana, I V A N A, mm -hmm. Y O V A. It's uh, not here. It's, I don't know, maybe. Ivana, E I V A N Y O A. One, one more A, and they, no, no, Ivana, 
uh, instead of y it's a uh, and a now a oh a uh, 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 duh. no no it was uh, okay it was as you wrote ivana e i v i v a n a I, I, I typed it in the chat actually. Yeah, and uh, uh, just let me see if I can get chat. I have the forever blessing of whenever I'm sharing my screen. Okay. Yes, I think. Uh, I it's uh, yeah, instead of there is no e. Uh, yep. Yeah, yeah, that's. Yeah, that, that will. Yeah, I got. The, I finally found the chat window again. From what I saw, it it uh, works with local host, right? Because uh, mm. it does. It does. Somewhere. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It does it. totally work with uh, local host. Okay, so I mean, I think a uh, nice little introduction to Augie. Let's call this the Augie episode um, and promote it accordingly. Let me know when the video is ready. Um, I think I, I uh, heard almost everything. There were a few moments when the, my internet interrupted, but uh, it was okay. When you, when you, Kevin posts the, posts this episode of the Augur meeting, to the um, mailing list, uh, there'll be a video attached to it, and uh, you'll be able to watch the video from beginning to end. For so anything that got interrupted, you'll be able to pick it up. Then. Um, and then what Andrew's doing right now is working on making the Augur community reports. Reports for newcomers and pull requests. Um, a set of captioned visualizations that you can retrieve with an API call. And I think. Um, <clears throat> I think that'll be that'll prove helpful to people in the future as well. So I think that's about all I've got. Does anybody else have any questions about Augur or this can be the end of this week's Augur call?
going once, going twice. All right, well, I say thank you all very much for participating in the auger call this week. And